Welcome to a tour bit on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an example of separating macros from content. We've been learning across a number of videos how we can use tags, name tags, to give a name to hooks. This allows us to later reference those hooks to apply changer macros. And we'll remember changer macros are a category of macros that exist within Harlow allow us to change things. So we've seen, seen things like text style, text size, and a number of other changer macros. In particular is the change macro, which allows us to set up various changes, changer macros, and then apply those changes after hooks already exist. In other words, we can set things up such that we have named hooks and then later, somewhere in the same passage, we can use the changer macro to then apply changer macros. Let's look at this example. So I'm going to start, start here, and we have two different hooks, each of which has a name tag, A and B. And then I'm using the display macro, which allows us to include the contents of another passage in the current passage. And this other passage is simply called styles. So what this is going to do is we're going to have our content right here, place names or give name tags to these particular hooks. And then we're going to separate out our styles, separate our macros from our content, such that things that change the presentation will be in another passage and then simply included or using the display macro from somewhere else. So we're currently looking at start. It's got names, it's got hooks. Let's move over to styles. Styles has the change macro, which allows us to reference the tag of a particular hook and then apply changer macros. So in this case, I have tall and right here for text style and for two for text size, as well as text style none and text color for gray. Notice A and B. So potentially we could set up all the styles or the presentations of text we might want across an entire story in one or two passages and then just reference that entire collection to use whenever we want, as long as we've got hooks and the corresponding tags for those hooks to reference them, to give them names. So let's see this whole thing in action. Build and play. Notice right here, this is speaker one, this is a different speaker. So I had my content right here in start, as well as I had the corresponding hooks, anything I wanted to affect, and then I had the tags, the name tags, along with those hooks to give them names. And then in a completely different passage, I had my primary macros. Now I am using one macro right here display, but it's just a single line. But notice if we want to start to separate things as having code in one place, and content in another, we can do that in Harlow. Of course, we can also mix the two for however we want. But as we start to think a little more about how we can use changers, and particularly the change macro, we can start to really separate things, have our content in one passage, our code or our macro usage in another passage, allow us to kind of safely organize things if that's what we want. And again, of course, we can mix them however we want as well. But this really opens up the possibilities of, with one approach, defining things using variables, saving those change your macros values, and then applying them to hooks, or alternatively, setting up the hooks with names and using the macros later. Two parallel and perfectly valid approaches within Harlow 3.3. One using macros setting up with variables and then hooks, and the other alternative using hooks and then the change macro with changer macros instead. Perfectly valid, and of course we can mix them, but two different approaches to thinking about macros and content. One setting up macros and content, and the other setting up content and then macros. Two different ways of thinking about it, both within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.